Okay, welcome everyone to today's webinar, Developing an E-Commerce Platform, presented by RCAP Solutions. Many thanks to our presenter, Dale Rutherford, for being with us today, and to all the participants who have joined in, and to our educational series sponsors, Shemong Canale Trust Company. Please note this webinar is being recorded to share what we learn with the business community. All attendees will receive the link to the recording. Again, oops, to the slide. Uh, Madison Wellman and Dale will share the presentation with you, then follow with time for questions and discussion. Please use the chat to submit any questions during the presentation. Just a reminder, when others are speaking, please keep your audio on mute to minimize background noise. With that said, I'll turn it over to Madison to start things off. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Madison. I run the uh, Open for Business program here at RCAP Solutions. Uh, I just wanted to let everyone know that in addition to these uh, joint virtual events with organizations like the Chemung County Chamber of Commerce, uh, we also do a regular broadcast webinar uh, every Thursday at 1 p.m. Uh, we do online workshops offered through our Open for Business Hub, uh, and we also provide a fantastic one-on-one -on -one business consulting service. Uh, if any of those services interest you, please reach out to me. My contact information will be included at the end of this presentation. I would love to register all of you for our amazing services. And with that, I'm going to pass the baton over to Dale. Thank you, Madison. Um, I'm Dale Rutherford, and I'm one of the senior management consultants uh, in a sister region for uh, RCAP Solutions. And we provide uh, direct consulting services to clients. So the topic we're going to cover today is generally one of the areas that we provide support to our clients on. Uh, and when we're talking about developing digital marketing platforms, <clears throat> you know, I caution that we're not going to make you digital marketing experts by the end of this webinar. And because when you start getting into this and, and you'll see in the discussion, there are people who specialize in, in certain aspects of the digital marketing platform. Well, we certainly cover the different moving parts so that you as business owners, if you're trying to develop a digital marketing platform, you kind of understand some of the options that are available to you, as well as uh, some of the planning considerations that you might want to uh, incorporate in your platform so that you understand this, the general concept. What we're gonna uh, cover today is, is what is an e-commerce platform and compass? Understanding the moving parts of an e-commerce platform, the need for developing an integrated digital marketing strategy tailored to the needs of your business, and the basic understanding of the framework for developing a di digital marketing strategy. Now, I will tell you that there is no single uh, solution that every, one size fits all when it comes to digital marketing. Every business digital marketing platform is different, okay? So it's key that you understand what the different components are and how you're going to, to pair these components up. So <clears throat> the first thing to do is understand what is the digital marketing platform in and of itself. The platform, Usually, it can support either a direct digital marketing business, that's where you uh, market and sell your products through the internet, and it's delivered by a third party, or you may have a brick and mortar business and you're trying to supplement your customer traffic, foot traffic in your business with some digital marketing exposure. So that platform could drive uh, more traffic into your business, or you may be able to provide your products and services through the digital marketing platform. So what does this encompass? The first component that we deal with, and many of you probably heard the concept of a uh, sales funnel. And the sales funnel is, is you know, in the old days, this would be your billboard signs and your radio uh, advertisements and TV advertisements, things of this nature to herald your business and saying, here's what our products and service we offer. And you're trying to pull traffic into your business. 
in today's digital world, we have a multitude of different type of channels that you can leverage to generate that traffic for you. So whether it's a brick and mortar or you're dealing with a strict digital marketing business, the sales funnel, the concept is still the same and you're still going to use the same components. It's just a matter of which one of those you use and the combination, I should say, and how you leverage those. The idea is to get your message out, make the world know that you exist and start bringing these customers to your door. The next part <clears throat> is once you get uh, the, your customer's attention, then you've got to capture that. There's in digital marketing research, it shows if you, you're able to get a customer or a prospect that sees your ad in the, in the digital nether, it's less than a second when they click on your website, whether they click off, whoops, uh, whether they bounce on you. So <clears throat> your landing page or where that customer comes to to make first contact with your business is very important because you don't want them bouncing on you. You want to draw them into your business so that you have an opportunity to sell your product or service. Once you get them into that cycle, then <clears throat> you're going to receive the orders. You got to process the order. You got to pick the order, package it, and inventory, whether it's a uh, finished goods inventory, and you got to ship it. And then the end result is your customer receives the products, goods, or services. So this is the actual order fulfillment is the third component. Now the order fulfillment doesn't stop with the customer receiving the product. It also encompasses if that customer doesn't receive what they ordered or if they're dissatisfied with that product, how are you going to do the re returns process? So these are three broad, or actually four broad categories of your platform. Questions about that before we move, move on. Okay. So <clears throat> how can we provide our products or services to customers? If you're dealing with a truly a digital marketing product, there's different uh, established channels uh, available to you. I'm sure many of you heard of Spotify or eBay, or Etsy, or Amazon. Some of you probably heard of Poshmark or ThreadUp. These are established platforms out there where you can sell your products. You don't have to create your own website. You can, but you don't have to. And you can actually list your products on these websites and they actually take care of the sales transaction for you. They'll even uh, have um, service where they'll uh, arrange for the shipping and print your shipping labels. For example, uh, ThreadUp, you can send your products. If you, if you have a product you want to sell, and they typically deal with uh, thrift products, you can send your products to ThreadUp. They stock it there for you. And when it's sold, they package it, label it, and ship it off for you. So all you got to do is figure out how you want to get your customers to ThreadUp's website to get them to see your products and purchase your products. So even when you're dealing with these third-party platforms, you still have to encompass, let's go back to here, you're still going to have to figure out how are you going to drive that traffic to your uh, point of sale on one of these websites. Does that make sense? Questions? All right. So although these websites here, what they're doing is they're handling this portion for you, actually these two, uh, two steps for you. They'll even handle this part. If the customer does, is not happy with the product and they want to return it, they'll handle that. So this is a big portion of the 
uh, e-commerce platform that is handled by somebody else that you don't have to worry about. All you'd have to do is worry about getting the traffic to that point. Does that make sense? Now, <clears throat> they don't do this for free. There's a cost. <laughs> So typically they're gonna take some percentage of your business. Now I will caution you when you set up uh, doing business through the, some of these sites, you have to be aware of how are they marketing your products, how they sell the products, what percentages they take and how are they handling the shipping and handling uh, aspect. And I'll give you a horror story. I had a client, ooh, almost a year ago uh, during COVID hit in 2020 she was a school teacher and she was sitting at home because now the schools are closed and she doesn't have anything to do so in June of 2020 she started making the face masks you know uh, you know these type face masks and from June 2020 through December, she sold about $4,000 worth of products and she was selling mainly through uh, Facebook marketplace. Somebody, one of her friends says, hey, look, this is a great product. And she, I won't get into the details of it, but she added something unique about it. You know, if you use Facebook advertising, you can really do this. And if you can find somebody who can make these products for you cheaper, you can, uh, make more money. So she got her smart cap on and she found some company in China to actually produce the product for her. And it was, she was costing her, what she thought was costing her about $2 and some change for the product. Then she got on Facebook advertising and set up her Facebook advertising account. And she really didn't reach out to anybody and do any homework on it. She just kind of started clicking buttons. Well, <clears throat> from June 2020 through December, she did about $4,000 worth of business. In January 2021, she did a little over $80,000 in one month. The problem was she didn't look at the supply chain. How long is it going to take? The people in China to produce the product and get it to her. She didn't factor in the fact that she was going to have to pay shipping and handling to get the product from China to the United States. And then she didn't factor in this lead time when she was advertising and marketing the product. So therefore, when customers ordering it, they were expecting immediate shipment and she didn't have the product. So she started juggling this. And when the product came in, in order to try to satisfy customers, she, <clears throat> she started uh, expediting shipments on her own through UPS. She was using Spotify to handle most of her sales. Spotify was using, I think, Shippo Hippo. And so they were already charging her for this shipping and handling for the product. And then she goes off and starts doing her own shipping and handling so now she's paying twice. She didn't factor in some of the other costs. So <clears throat> her product, she ended up, it was costing her more than what she was selling it for. She didn't realize this because the money coming in and money going out. And in her mind, she thought, hey man, I'm, I'm only paying $2 and something for this product and I'm making $20 off of it. So her and her friends started partying. She started spending money. And when it was the end of the month in January, the party was over because by then, although she sold 80 something thousand dollars, she owed Facebook market play or Facebook advertising $44,000 and she owed UPS $38,000. So she, in one month, she went from thinking she was had the world by the tail to go and bankrupt, okay? So when you're working with these third-party platforms, you have to be careful of understanding what those terms and conditions are. Although they're handling all of this for you, there is a cost, 
And <clears throat> you can go to some of these websites. Let's see if it'll pop up here. See if it'll let me do it. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. A lot of these websites will provide some information for you. Um, it's easy to set up the accounts to do this work through them. Uh, some of them have multiple product lines that you can offer. ThreadUp typically deals with thrifts, thrift market, selling to secondhand products, primarily clothes and, and uh, accessories. But you also in here, if you go to ThreadUp, uh, I will share this with you. They have go to about and go to educate. They have some uh, some very informative articles. One of them I would call your attention to if you go to ThreadUp is to check out this one. It's an annual resale report, and you'll be interested to find out in here that uh, let's see if it pull it up here for me. Um, I don't want to do that. So we'll go back. You can pull up this report. I don't want to log into that right now, but uh, <clears throat> you can pull this report for this and you'll find that the growth expected in the thrift market is supposed to be like 30% year over year over the next two to three years. So this is probably one of the uh, fastest growing market segments that's resulted from COVID in the, in the retail world. It's so prominent that a lot of the retailers uh, like TJ's Max and some of these other uh, companies that traditionally have brick and mortar stores that do some digital marketing, they're actually getting into the resale market, uh, to the thrift market, because this area here is growing so much. Okay, so let me close that down. So <clears throat> I won't go into all these, but I will tell you that each one has different um, parameters on how they handle this, this portion of your business, okay? So just be, do your homework on those. The other option to you is uh, if, if you have a, uh, a physical product is used fulfilled by Amazon. Does anybody see a thumbs up? Anybody's heard, heard about fulfilled by Amazon? Okay. Fulfilled by Amazon handles a lot of this shipping for you. There you go. A couple of you have. What you typically do with Fulfilled by Amazon, whatever your products are, you produce your products and you ship it to Amazon. And they stock it in their warehouse. And when you have an order uh, for your product, they pull it, they package it, they ship it, and it's done deal. All you got to do is worry about driving the traffic. Again, we're back to this part here. All right. And we're going to drill down on this here in just a second. But <clears throat> before fulfilled by Amazon, when you're going in to work with them, you have to be very careful to really do some homework on that one. Because as a general rule, you're going to pay about 40% of your uh, product revenue to Amazon for doing all that work for you and being able to, to stock it on Amazon's distribution centers. Besides spending 40%, then when you may, there's, they have some software that you use to manage your, your stockage levels. But what they will do is they'll tell you you know, it's not a simple matter. Well, send us a hundred of your product and we'll stock that. And when we get low, we'll, we'll order more. Well, they don't do that. It's up to you to manage your stock levels at Amazon. What they will tell you is that, well, we want out of that hundred, we want 10 to go to this distribution center. We want 12 to go over here, eight to here, you know, 13 over here, 26 over here. So you've got to ship these products from your production site to Amazon. Now I have a client that has a product and what she's doing, she doesn't touch the product. Well, she does, but 
she has two different channels that she uses. She's designed a product and it's primarily sold through the internet. She has a digital marketing platform. And we're working with her to expand that and make it a little bit more robust and optimize it. When she gets orders, it comes in, that order gets sent directly to the contract manufacturer who's actually producing the product for her. That contract manufacturer will package it and ship it out. So whether it's a onesie twosies or if it's um, a case of 10 or 20 or 30, it doesn't matter to them, they'll package it and ship it. In that respect, all she does is facilitate that sales process and she's focusing on that sales funnel. How is she getting the customers in there to it? The other one, she sells through Amazon. And when she came to us, she says, you know, I've been doing this on Amazon. I'm listed there and my product's there, but I'm not getting any sales. So when we started looking at it, what do you understand? How many's heard of SEOs? SEO, search engine optimization. How many people have heard that term? So we've got a couple. All right. <clears throat> Search engine op optimization is where we, probably all of you are familiar with hashtags. Yes, no, using hashtags. Search engine optimization is similar to using hashtags, but you embed this into your websites. And you, if you're dealing with Amazon, for example, or some of these others, uh, third party platforms, you can set your SEOs, but there's a strategy behind that. There's a whole technique and strategy, how, how you word it and whether you got short tail or long tail SEOs. This will determine whether your product pops up. So when you go to Amazon and you're looking for a product, you typically go to the search line, right? And you put in, um, I want a whiz bang wombat widget. And so when you put in whiz bang wombat widget, all the sellers who's selling those widgets pop up. Well, this lady says, well, my product is unique, but when I put in this search, I don't show up. I have to go to like 15 pages search through Amazon before my product will come up. Well, the problem there is you got to optimize your SEOs, even on Amazon or Spotify or whoever. So when people are searching for your product, then you've got to have the strategy of how, how do you word those SEOs to bring your products up? Then you got to worry about your ratings for your product, your uh, quality ratings. If you get a uh, five-star rating review or a four-star review. Each of these sites have algorithms that determine who gets to go to the top of the list and who's at the bottom of the list. You can affect that by how you manage that's, those SEOs and other factors. All of these are part of your strategy on how you're going to manage your digital marketing platform. So let's look at the next part. The other option for a platform is that you have your own website and you're driving your traffic to here and you're managing your customers yourself. And then you handle, it's like our client, <clears throat> her second channel, she has a website and she sells some of her products business to business. So she's got products she sells to business to consumers and some of it she sells business to business. So she has a central website, but she has two different landing pages. One, it's a landing page for the business to business customers and a different one for the um, consumer buyer. There's different places where you can set up your websites. I assume everybody here probably has a website either for your business or uh, you're working for or your new business if you're trying to start a business. These, I'm not wrecking any one of these. I'm just showing you some examples of Wix, Squarespace, GoDaddy. Um, there's a multitude of them out there that will help you set up your websites. They're all, that's all great and wonderful that they help you, you know, make it look, look good. 
the problem is, is they're not doing much to help you drive this. So even though you have your own website and you can list your own products, catalogs, things of that nature, you've still got to manage this component right here. And if you have your own website, then you've got to worry about the order fulfillment portion of it. So let's drill down on the sales funnel process because this is where we start dissecting what the platform, your digital marketing platform is all about. Your digital marketing platform may start with something like this, something like this, or something like this. But basically, what, those three options, you're dealing with this component. How are you going to physically deliver your product or service? How are you going to receive that order? How are you going to process it? How are you going to ship it, deliver it, or handle returns? So each of these options, all they're doing is giving you a different way of handling this. The common thread is how are you going to drive those customers to your business? So if you're going to pick one of these three, is something like this, this, or this as your base for here. Now let's back up and look at the sales funnel. How are you going to drive this business? The key is there's a lot of different options on how you're going to reach the customer. You have to reach the customers, make them aware that you exist. Out of sight, out of mind. So if the customer doesn't know you exist, they're not going to come to your website and buy a product, correct? <clears throat> then once they know you exist, you got to have some way to pull them in to your, to your website or your platform, selling platform, so that you have an opportunity to showcase your product, convince them to buy. Realize this. When it comes to sales and marketing, a consumer or a business buyer, business-to-business uh, -business purchasing agent, they're still, that buying decision is still made by a person. They will not purchase a product until there's a perceived need. Just because they want it, they won't buy it. They have to convert that want to a need. You have to convert that interest to a want and then try to carry them to that step where they need it, convince them they need it, and then give them an opportunity to sell it. So <clears throat> this sales funnel is all about how are you managing this customer experience to get them th through this process. First of all, you've got to make, make them aware that you exist. I'll back up to the client that we're dealing with that she's already listed on Amazon. But when you try to search her product, even when you put her company name in Amazon, she doesn't show up for like 14 or 15 pages of search. Research shows that most people will bounce on you. A large portion bounce after the first page. The vast, vast majority bounce by the second page and hardly nobody ever goes past your third page to search. So if you're on page 14 or 15, you're not getting any sales. You might be listed, but you're not getting any sales. So how do you move yourself up that ladder to get the customers to, to engage with you? The first step is awareness. There's different platforms that you can use to reach awareness. Um, you've got Twitter, you've got Facebook, you've got <clears throat> um, uh, Snapchat, uh, you know, well, let's look here. here. This gives you an idea of how many different social media channels are out there that you can tie into to help drive different stages of this conversion process. That's a lot, okay? Uh, provided the, the 
the slide so you can, so you can kind of get your reading glasses on when you can see this. But <clears throat> the idea is these different um, channels affect people differently. For example, let's go to here. This is consumer life cycle. So if you're going to you're going to reach those customers, typically you're going to have to get your name, business name in front of the client, of the customers. So you have certain types of mechanisms that you use. For example, paid media, something you own like your website, you earn media, you may have a, uh, a, a partnership with some other affiliation with other websites and just organic search. So <clears throat> the idea is how can I leverage these, which ones want to reach my customers? Because uh, Barry's customers are going to be different from Emily's customers versus Liz's customers, depending on the product and service that you're providing. Everybody has different uh, buying behaviors. So you have to understand that customer to know where do they shop? Where do they spend their time on the internet? And how can you get your name and face in front of them? Once that happens, the next part of your platform is to get them into that funnel to start getting them to act. And what are you trying to do to get them to act? You're trying to get them to click on that ad or you're trying to click on this link to get them to your website. So you, your first part, your website, part of your platform is your landing pages. There, that's where you have a split second, and that's literally split second to get their attention, to get them to read and go to the next step, to click on to the next step. How many of you go on to websites, you're searching for something and you click on it, and as soon as that first page pops up, it's, I mean, it's almost immediately you click off. How many has done that? Yes, no, thumbs, wave your hands. Okay. All right. This is the reality. So part of your platform is how are you structuring that website or your landing page to to get that person to stay long enough to go to the next page. The first part of the platform is reaching them and getting to your website, then to get that landing page, to get them into the website where you have an opportunity to start creating that want and then convert that want to a need and then convert that need to a transaction, a purchase. So each one of these steps your, your media, your digital uh, media is going to vary based on your product and service. But your website is very important part of this digital marketing platform because once you get them there, this is where you have the opportunity to convert that interest to a sale. The typical um, conversion rate on across all industries is about 2.3%, I think it is, 2.3%. So if you've got 10,000 people out here that you uh, flagged your business banner in front of, and you got them to start trying to come into the sales funnel, by the time they go through these different stages, you're only gonna have 2.3% fall out the other end. Now, in your digital marketing platform, let's back up here. You're going to have different, whoops, you have different types of services to get your name out there. You probably heard click a uh, pay for click. Uh, how many of you used uh, paid advertising on digital uh, marketing before? Does anybody use paid advertising? Okay, there's a couple. All right, <clears throat> you're gonna find different rates. And how you structure your platform, you need to have a strategy of how are you going to use, not only use these um, types of advertising, whether it's paid media or it's your own organic 
or you do an affiliation because it all has a cost. Uh, depending on <clears throat> who you market through, that pay for click may be a matter of two or three cents, or it can be two or three dollars. And I had one client that they read something somewhere about doing um, this digital marketing and paying for the advertising. And they went out and they signed up for it and they were getting traffic, but it was costing like $2 and 70 cents per click. But once they, they got the traffic to their website, because you can measure Google Analytics, it's gonna show you this increase in traffic of people coming to your website. So she was getting that, but then once they got to this, her landing page, they were bouncing. She wasn't extra able to convert them from that landing page to get into the website to give her an opportunity to sell the product. When it was all said and done, she was paying more for the advertising than she was selling the product for. This is a different one from the lady doing the mask, okay? So you have to have a strategy and a budget on how you're going to do this. Now, the key to getting this conversion from your uh, advertising is going to be how are you setting up your SEOs? Remember I mentioned your SEOs before. You gotta be real careful of have a strategy to structure those SEOs that they're going to reach the customers that you're looking for, okay? For example, a short tail uh, SEO, like a hashtag. If I'm selling hats, okay? So maybe I'm selling flat caps. I'm not selling cowboy hats. I'm not selling hard hats. I'm not selling baseball caps. I'm selling flat caps. So, but if I only put in my SEO hats, I might get 10,000 people that say, oh, I'm interested in a hat. They come to my landing page and they see that all I sell is flat caps. Well, I'm not interested in that. I want a cowboy hat or I want a fedora or I want a baseball cap, whatever the case may be they're not interested in a, in a flat cap, they bounce. And so now I just paid to have them come there when they weren't even a qualified customer. So how can I qualify these customers so that if, if I'm gonna pay for that click, that there's, these are potential viable customers? Well, I have to go to long tail SEOs. And this is where I take, instead of just hats, I put flat hats, flat cap. I may have one SEO says flat hat. Somebody may say flat cap. Depends on who, where you're at, part of the country, where they, how they say it. So just by adding that second word to my SEO, now when somebody sees that flat cap or searching for flat caps or flat hats, my ad will pop up and then they'll, come to my website. Now I've got an opportunity to sell them because they're in a market for a flat hat and that's what I sell. You understand, is that making sense? You understand what I'm explaining? Yes, no. Sometimes I talk fast. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so your platform, part of your strategy for your digital marketing platform must include a very deliberate effort to structure SEOs. You must have in your strategy a very deliberate effort of who you're going to market, do your marketing through. Uh, when I say marketing, if you're going to pay paid advertising, you have to be very deliberate who you're going to reach out to and pay them for clicks. There are people out there, um, the Cardassians. Everybody's heard of the Cardassians, right? What do they actually do? Do they sell a product? to actually sell a service, okay? What do the Cardassians do? They really don't do anything, right? But what they do do is they get people to click on 
their name. There's hardly a day go by. I don't care what news report you're looking at Yahoo news or whatever. The Kardashians are not in the news or flashing pictures of their newest fashion or whatever. They get people to click on that website. In their website, if you go there, they're going to be some type of advertisements. If you're watching a video, how many seen the videos where you got these little 15 second clips inside your videos? Even if you go to Facebook video, what they're doing is that they're selling advertising. They get people to come see their website. And while they're there, they flash these ads. That's what they call social media influencers. Now, is your product something that you think the people going to look at the Cardassians are going to be looking for your product? Maybe, maybe not. But if I'm selling automotive aftermarket automotive parts that fits a Ford automobile, then I'm going to be looking for some type of social media influencer that deals with hot rods or uh, aftermarket automobile modifications. Am I making sense? So part of your, your, your strategy is focus a deliberate effort of who you're going to market through. This is part of your platform. Who you're going to pull as affiliates. All of these are components to that platform. Questions at this point? Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> Let's look at this for a minute. As you see here, um, most of you are familiar with Google, or you're familiar with um, um, Spotify, or you're familiar with, um, I'm trying to think of the, uh, my mind's going blank, Facebook. Um, what's this, what's this one now that's uh, the, the videos, um, I'm trying to think now. Um, my mind's gone blank. Well, they do the little short videos. Uh, <clears throat> some of these social media sites, TikTok, that's it. Thank you, Emily. TikTok. TikTok is probably the, one of the most popular uh, channels that um, businesses are using to advertise their products because of the volume. Now let's take TikTok and let's compare that to Twitter. Twitter, <clears throat> you've got 240 words. You can go in there and you can post a message. But on Twitter, the average life of your post is 2.3 seconds. I mean, 2.3 minutes, say about two and a half minutes. Okay. After two and a half minutes, you don't exist. So every two and a half minutes, if you're going to keep a constant presence in Twitter, you got to have a post popping up every two and a half minutes to reach that market. Now, Twitter <clears throat> has uh, over a billion um, subscribers worldwide. In Twitter, they have some marketing tools that can tell you based on if you put in certain hashtags, it'll tell you when the traffic is most common or the peak of the traffic is on Twitter when they're searching for this hashtag. So then you can schedule your message to get it in front of more people at the optimum time. The problem with Twitter is that it is a, um, it's more of a message. People, you know, just chit chatting and sharing um, comments back and forth, trying to get a ad that's going to attract somebody on Twitter is going to be very difficult. Unless all you're doing is, is content. You're trying to use content to drive your interest. TikTok, people go in there and they're being entertained. So that's why you're seeing more people that are engaged in TikTok, and then you can embed your uh, message or advertising in a particular TikTok message. And there's a strategy how to do that. So that when you, 
when someone's searching for a certain TikTok subject, you can associate your product with that and your ad will pop up associated with that. This is really good when you're doing consumer type products. What if you do business to business? Can anybody tell me what the most popular uh, social media platform for business to business sales are? Yes, LinkedIn, there you go. Emily's on it today. Um, LinkedIn is the, is the most popular social media platform or channel, social media channel to do business to business sales. So depending on your product and who you're trying to reach, you're going to select from this plethora of, of um, channels to help move your product, your message. Now, are you gonna go out there and try to embrace all of them that you can? Okay. What's the problem with trying to go out there and wrap your arms around 20 or 30 of these different channels? Spread too thin. Explain. Okay. So when we talk about spread too thin, what we're really talking about is that you have to have content. There you go. Your resources short and you're given enough meat and potatoes to be spot. You're correct. Because what we have to do is we have to provide content. And that content has to be relevant and it has to be of interest and it has to be something that's going to help uh, convert that person's attention to capture attention. There's a strategy in your content. If you've got too many of these websites or these channels out there, how are you going to manage posting your content to all of them at the appropriate time and have that message tailored to those customers? that are using those channels. It's, not, it's almost impossible. Or if it's not impossible, it's extremely expensive. So typically what you wanna do is you wanna identify in terms of your social media platform, which one of these social media channels, normally three to five, but the optimum is around three. Identify at least three social media platform or channels that you think that you're going to be able to reach the majority of your customers and then start trying to manage them for the content and the scheduling. Now that brings us to another part of your platform. To help you in this process, you can use uh, um, sites such as Hootsie, uh, HubSpot, uh, MailChimp. There's several of these out there. Uh, some of you probably used some of them in the past. These um, apps, if you will, or sites can help you manage your social media, particularly if you're a small business, then you can end, end up going uh, with them to schedule certain uh, content. You develop the content and you put it on a schedule and it'll automatically post to that social media channel at the optimum time. Many of them give you research or feedback as to which, <clears throat> which is the best times, what's the best day, what's the best time, right? Uh, give example, we were talking before this webinar. There's research that shows if you're going to do a webinar, the optimum time to, to host a webinar is on Thursdays at noon central. Okay, not just Thursdays, but noon central. The next most optimal time to host a webinar is at noon on Wednesday. Now, the optimum time to promote your webinar is at Tuesday at nine o'clock in the morning central time. So you're going to send out your notifications at 9 a.m. central time on Tuesdays, the, the Tuesday before your webinar. You're going to send a reminder the day before, and you're going to send a reminder at nine o'clock the morning of your webinar. So if you do those simple things, 
you'll increase the registration and you increase your conversion rate from people who register versus people who attend. So <clears throat> the same thing happens with your business. There's optimum times when you want to promote your business and there's optimum times doing follow-up like your email. Email, doing an email list is probably one of the most productive channels that you can use to reach your customers and bring them in to your website and convert them to purchase. There's laws and regulations about using email. You have to be careful about spamming. But even if you have content that you're sharing through email, there's optimum times of the week, which day of the week and which day time of the day to share that media to get your, your greatest conversion, okay? So your platform, depending on which stage that you're trying to do to reach, oops, to reach your customers through this life cycle here, you have different channels that are more uh, appropriate to reach that group, your customers for that stage of your business. Questions? Okay. So here's her, <clears throat> her final slide. What this is telling us, if you're going to manage a uh, digital marketing or e-commerce platform, you've got different moving parts. And I've given you some examples of some of the most prominent or the most important components, but they're all important, but the, the ones that are, have the biggest impact. Um, part of it is going to be what is your uh, base platform that you're going to use, whether you're going to use like a third-party platform like Etsy or Spotify or something like that that's going to handle your <coughs> order delivery. And then you're just going to focus on advertising or are you going to have your own website where you're having to do everything. Um, and even to the point that your, your order fulfillment, you're taking care of that yourself. All of these are components of this e-commerce platform. You've got <clears throat> each of these things you've got to uh, manage. Your email marketing, your SEOs, you've got to manage your websites, um, the media. Uh, you know, we haven't even gotten into you know, other channels that you might have for advertising, promoting your products is like digital radio. Even digital radio, digital radio is is uh, common among uh, consumers that are uh, 25 years old or less or younger. If you're trying to reach a target market of somebody my age, you know, I stood road guard for the three wise men. So um, if you're trying to reach me, you are probably gonna go to FM radio, <laughs> okay? Um, which I don't hardly listen to radio anymore. But the point being is different demographic groups frequent different types of channels of communication. So if it's digital radio, uh, that reaches one, one demographic group. If you, um, you're going to radio, uh, traditional uh, radio, that's a different age group, demographic group. If you're using cable TV, even on cable TV, you got some people that uh, only watch certain types of channels. So you got to understand your customers. Your whole platform should be, the strategy should be driven by how the customer shops and how the customer is going to follow this life cycle. You have to understand your customer's trip along this path to make sure that at every stage of this, you're standing in front of them waving your, waving your flag. At every step, you're there to, uh, to get their attention and trying to pull them into your uh, sales channel. Okay. So again, these slides are provided to you. I'm not gonna go to uh, each and every one of these. I think we're about out of time. But if you have specific questions about this, 
um, and you want someone to discuss your business and help you look at a strategy tailored to your business, even if it's just a matter you want uh, to brainstorm with someone, um, holler at us and we'll be glad to uh, spend some time with you. Uh, I will stress to you that we are grant funded. Our services are uh, our organization funded by grants. Therefore, whatever time we provide, uh, there's no cost to that. Um, and so you don't have to worry about somebody hitting you with a bill for $100 an hour or something like that. Um, questions, I can open up to questions and I can stay as long as you guys want to questions or Madison might have something to add. All right, since there aren't any questions, we can uh, go ahead and, and wrap it up. Um, we'll share the link to the recording with everybody later on. And you can also visit shamongchamber.org to register for other upcoming webinars or find recordings from previous rep webinars. If anybody is interested in a chamber membership, please contact the chamber at info at shamongchamber.org or call at 607-734-5137. Um, Madison, did you want to give any further information regarding RCAP before we close up? Uh, just that, uh, that's my contact information there on the right-hand side of the screen, uh, and that if anyone is interested in any of the services uh, that Dale described, like our one-on-one -on -one consulting, the grant-funded one-on-one consulting, uh, feel free to give me a call, shoot me an email, or visit our website, uh, and we'd be happy to get you registered for those services. I hope uh, the information we presented today was helpful and informative. Yeah, okay, great. Um, many thanks to Dale and Madison from RCAP Solutions and to everyone for joining us today. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you.